what we've created here is a laboratory model that we're going to use to demonstrate how air leakage works in wintertime. And the phenomenon we're concerned with is called stack effect because stack effect is often the single greatest driving force behind air leakage in houses in winter. So what we have is an aquarium filled with water and that represents our winter environment. And we've got a plexiglass box here filled with colored oil that represents our house. Now it takes two things to produce air leakage. It takes holes and we have the potential for holes here with the ports in our box. And it takes a pressure difference across those holes to provide the incentive for air to move through the hole. And this is where it gets interesting. How do we get a pressure difference? Well, what happens is when it gets very cold outside, let's say it's 40 below outside and inside it's 70 above. Well, that's a 110 degree difference in temperature. What that difference in temperature does is it creates very cold, dense, heavy air outside in relation to lighter, more buoyant air inside. That's your pressure difference. This difference in air density between outside and inside gives us the pressure difference that we need to produce air leakage if we have holes. So the next step here is to create some holes. The first place we're going to simulate some air leakage is up at the top of the house. And so we're going to create a hole and this would represent air leakage up near the ceiling or the upper walls. You could have an electrical outlet somewhere that's not sealed right, wiring penetrations. There could be a hole or a detailing issue with the plastic vapor retarder. There could be air leakage around a can light or a chimney. So here comes the first hole in our perfect box. Well, nothing's coming out. Well, the simple fact is, in order for something to come out, something has to come in. So we have to produce another hole somewhere in our box. So now that we've got holes at the top of our building, we're going to create some holes down at the bottom. And what we're going to simulate by opening this bottom hole here is air leakage coming in through holes in the rim joist. Any holes down low around electrical outlets on that base of that first floor, air leakage between the wall plates and things like that. So I'm going to go in and create some air leakage down low. Air is coming in down low and it's leaking out the top. And we can see here that there's some very cold, dense outdoor air that's come in through the crawl space and it's settled in down at the bottom. As that air warms up, it heats, it rises, and gradually it works its way to the top. And you have this continuously ongoing cycle through stack effect where air is leaking out the top, coming in at the bottom, and you're paying for that, so you're losing some heat. Now we've closed the hole at the bottom. The hole at the top is still open. Remember, in order for something to come out, something has to come in. We're going to open a hole in the middle and see what happens. We're still seeing air leakage through stack effect. Dense cold air is coming in at the middle. Warm buoyant air is escaping at the top. But the interesting thing is it's not escaping as fast as it was when we had the greatest separation between the holes. Now let's see what happens when we open a hole at the bottom and a hole in the middle and we close the hole at the top. Even though the top is closed, we've still got air leakage through stack effect, we've got dense cold air coming in at the bottom, and we've got warm buoyant air exhausting out the middle. Once again though, it's exhausting a little bit slower than it was when we had the greatest separation between the holes. And this is really, really important when it comes to stack effect. The greater the distance between the holes, the greater your air leakage rate will be. So if you've got a three-story house and a hole down low at the foundation and a hole up in the attic, your air leakage is going to be much more aggressive than it would be in a single-story house. The other thing that affects the air leakage rate is the temperature outside. The colder it gets outside, the faster the air leakage rate will be. So what does all this mean? Well, it's costing you money one way or another. So the question that needs to be answered is, how does stack effect affect building performance? All that water vapor that we generate from breathing and showering and cooking, and basically living in a house in wintertime, well, that water vapor can travel via air leakage into different parts of the building envelope where we certainly don't want it. And we've demonstrated with stack effect that that hot, buoyant air 
rises and leaks out up at the top. So if you've ever seen an attic vent in the winter time with a lot of frost around the outside, well that's a pretty sure sign that you've got some water vapor traveling via air leakage and stack effect up into your attic. If that water vapor stays up there long enough and becomes trapped, you could have some other problems. But that's not the only issue. If you have too much air leakage out of the top and you can't draw enough replacement air in from down low through leakage and holes, it may come in through a malfunctioning combustion appliance such as a boiler or a wood stove. Sometimes the stack effect will be powerful enough that it will actually pull wood smoke or combustion gas from a boiler into the house. Another issue that happens is the reason we get high concentrations of radon in wintertime is because stack effect is pulling that soils gas in through the foundation and bringing it into the house. Another good example of stack effect at work when you've got too much air leakage out the top is when you're bringing in sewer smells because a trap has dried up. While stack effect can't get enough air from other places, it's drawing it through the plumbing system, bringing that sewage smell into the house. This is a very important point. In order to most safely air seal a house, it's always better to air seal from the top down. If you close the holes off at the top, you will reduce that incentive to cause backdrafting of appliances and to have air leakage come in from the bottom. If you air seal from the bottom first, you're making the tighter, a tighter house, but you're still leaking out of the top and your chances of backdrafting an appliance or causing other problems are much greater.